any rapidly developing society, be it culturally or technologically, requires a constant influx of new lexicon or vocabulary. When this new lexicon becomes primarily from other languages, more often than not English, the protection of native words can be viewed as a problem. Katakana has become the way that modern Japan has chosen to protect its traditional language. No matter the degree of contact with Western culture or the adoption of foreign loanwords from other languages, Katakana allows for the assimilation of loanwords while allowing the traditional language and culture to be maintained. Katakana actually physically separates the loanwords from those of native or Chinese origin by representing them with a completely different looking script. Dichotomy between traditional and loanwords can be plainly seen by looking at the menus of a Western style restaurant or coffee shop and comparing them to menus found at traditionally Japanese food restaurants. Look at the above menu for a cafe, which basically serves Western style food. Can you see the bold and simple style of katakana on the majority of the menu? Now look at this menu from a Japanese sushi restaurant. Can you see the difference in scripts? Traditional Japanese foods are almost always completely written in kanji. Interestingly, the only katakana I can find on this menu is actually the name of the restaurant, Sushiro. Mm -hmm. Because katakana often stands out from regular Japanese script these days, it has taken on a major role in marketing. The above-mentioned sushi restaurant most likely chose to use katakana as part of their main logo because, well, the idea of foreign is cool. Uh, the katakana does stand out and is possibly more memorable. As this form of westernization exists alongside the native culture instead of replacing the native culture, Japanese people are able to accommodate and experience lingual aspects of another culture without losing access to their own language identity. That said, in recent times, there has been a shift to using even more catechanized words, particularly in the popular media and in the aforementioned marketing strategies. Knowledge of foreign language is also thought to many as to be connected with a person's intellectual level. So many Japanese youth are helping to assimilate even more foreign loanwords into the language. This increase of words can be seen by the increase in the number of words in the official Katakana Dictionary. In 1972, when the dictionary was first published, it contained 20,000 words. However, the 2000 edition came, contained 52,500 foreign word entries. The effects on the Japanese culture can be seen by the fact that in 2013, an elderly man actually sued the national broadcaster NHK over their increased use of foreign loanwords. He complained that the overuse of foreign words caused him emotional distress, accusing NHK of irresponsibility and lack of respect for the diversity of its audience as the elderly do not understand a large number of these foreign loanwords which have been added to the Japanese language. Although the man did not win the case, it shows that language contact has a widespread effect on the Japanese language. This major generational literacy gap which has arisen in Japan has also led to a growing sentiment in Japan that too many foreign loanwords are infecting the Japanese language. Obviously, whenever there are language contact situations, we will find language change, and there will be both forces to accommodate and resist this change. Katakana was originally thought to be the solution that satisfied both of these. Although there are groups of elderly in Japan who believe that the limitlessness that katakana gives to the acceptance of foreign words into Japanese is tarnishing the language, most would agree that it has given a good balance between convergence and divergence with foreign languages. Allowing new words to enter the language, but representing them with a different writing script, helps to define the language boundaries between the traditional and newly adopted words. This means that youth and new learners of the language will always be able to easily differentiate between these two vocabulary groups.